what I'm showing you here is what is really exciting to us. This is really encapsulates many of the things that we found from our monkey studies. But most importantly, what you see in color are the brain regions that are overactive in individuals that are at risk for the later development of anxiety and depression. And this is in young monkeys. These are findings that we could not have come up with in, in human children. Uh, we've studied a lot of animals, and what we see is certain brain regions are way overactive. And these are the brain regions that we think now that we have to target from the standpoint of reducing the levels of activity. Let me point out just a few of them to you, because this is really critical. Up here, as you see this brain rotating, this is the back of the brain, and here we come around to the front. This part is the frontal cortex, and this is what's critical in primate brains. Um, right here in the dark red and yellow color is the region called the temporal lobe or the amygdala. And we think that the frontal cortex is talking to these regions, and this is what relates to this high level of anxiety. Now what's critical here is that uh, primates Monkeys and humans have a very well-developed prefrontal cortex, but other species don't. And that's why the monkey is such an important uh, species to use for these studies. We cannot do this kind of imaging with children at this age. In addition, what we're looking at here is we're looking at how metabolically active the brain is. And that requires using um, some radioactivity that we would use in adults, but we generally don't like to use that in human children. But we can use this in animals. It doesn't hurt the animals but it's just it's an issue of exposure to levels of radioactivity. If we slice the brain this way with the imaging, these are what these sections are. And this goes from the front of the brain, which is here, a slice through here, to the back of the brain or the brain stem, which is down below back in here. And one of the things that we discovered is that it's not just one region that causes anxiety. This is a new idea too. It's lots of regions. It's a whole network throughout the brain that's overactive. And furthermore, we've now begun to understand how these different brain regions are relating to each other. So that they're all talking to each other and we think that the way that they're connected to each other is critical. Now, the next question is to understand how mild to moderate adversity influences this circuitry. We believe that mild adversity will make this circuitry more active, even further overactive. And then we can understand what's going on. What are the chemicals? that underlie this overactivity? What are the chemicals that uh, take a adverse experience and translate that into a brain that is more overactive, which then results in more anxiety? If we understand those chemicals, then we can begin to understand ideas about new therapies that nobody has thought about before, which we think can make a difference.